Good Sunday morning, Northeast Ohio, on this 14th day of June. Flag Day it was on the state back in 1777. The Second Continental Congress meeting in Philadelphia took a break from writing the Articles of Confederation to declare that going forward, the American flag, well, should be this. 13 alternating red and white stripes with 13 white stars in a blue field. Grown a bit since then to the present day 50. It would be 77 years after that date in 1777 that the city of Philadelphia would establish its first police department, ditching the old night watch set up at the time. Policing in America has seen great changes in that time, maybe not as much as we're about to see this year following the death in Minneapolis at the hands of police of George Floyd. The 134-page Justice in Policing Act contains a long list of reforms, including the banning of chokeholds and the creation of a national registry of police misconduct, while also making it easier to prosecute an officer and ending racial profiling and no-knock warrants. The goal of this legislation is to achieve a guardian, not warrior, model of policing. Two days after it was introduced, it had its first hearing in Congress. We can and should debate the specifics, but at the end of the day, it is the responsibility and the obligation of the House Judiciary Committee to do everything in our power to help deliver that change for the American people. The committee heard from the brother of George Floyd who urged action in his brother's name. Honor George and make the necessary changes that make law enforcement the solution and not the problem. Defunding police is not part of the legislation, but it was a major focus for Republicans on the panel. The fact that my Democrat colleagues won't speak out against this crazy policy is just that frightening. It was the focus as well for Republican witnesses like Cleveland Heights pastor and President Trump advisor Daryl Scott. I do not recommend throwing the baby out with the bathwater by labeling all police officers as bad cops. Senator Sherrod Brown, one of the bill's Senate co-sponsors, told me he's not surprised and expects it to be a theme as well in the Senate. Well, everything Donald Trump does is to try to distract. And um, as you may have noticed, John, the Senate Republicans follow every single thing Donald Trump wants them to do. They're going to play with that term, defund the police, as if Democrats want to eliminate police departments. That's clearly not true. And Senator Brown tells me he believes there is enough common ground in the Senate between Democrats and Republicans that they can come up with actionable measures that can be taken this year. On weather, we often talk about 100-year storms. The same might be true in history. And this year, of course, we're dealing with two, with the unrest surrounding the death of George Floyd and, of course, the coronavirus pandemic. Here in the state of Ohio, Governor Mike DeWine and Dr. Amy Acton have been the face of the fight until this week when Dr. Acton decided that she was going to step down immediately. When Governor Mike DeWine took office in January of 2019, there was a hole in his cabinet, health director. It would be the last position he would fill. He didn't want a bureaucrat. He wanted someone with a public health background who had a passion for the job. Dr. Amy Acton told me in April she gave the governor an earful in her interview, which she figured would take her out of the running. Never in my life did I expect a phone call or a job like this. It landed her the job, a job she would hold through the state's greatest health crisis in a century, a job she would walk away from on Thursday. This week, Dr. Acton told me that she feels it is time for her to step down. She will be replaced on an interim basis by Lance Himes, the department's general counsel and deputy director, who served twice as interim director during the Kasich administration. A state's health director in normal times serves in relative anonymity. The coronavirus crisis, though, thrust Dr. Acton into the spotlight. There were public accolades, Facebook fan pages, and other shows of support that popped up across the state in her honor. There was also pushback from those, including Republicans in the legislature, who tried to strip her of her power in an effort to reopen the state. Dr. Acton said Thursday the demands of the job were too great, but though she may no longer have the title, she will still have something. The governor's ear. DeWine convincing Acton to stay on as his chief health advisor. In addition to advising on health issues, she will continue to focus on the COVID-19 crisis while remaining committed to the vision of the department. The Dr. Acton will stay on in that role, which will take her out of the public eye, but still in a key position in this fight is an example of something she told me in April of the thought that has driven her since this health crisis started. The story is always in all the famous pandemics is you didn't do enough and you always rack your brain hoping that you've done everything you can. So here's what it boils down to. Dr. Acton has been a trusted advisor to Governor DeWine throughout this whole crisis. Nothing changes on that. She will now be doing it, though, outside of the public eye and the rigors that go along with it. With Democracy 2020, I'm John Kasich. Enjoy your Sunday. Stay safe.